And we're live. Hi. Hi, everybody. I am Yolanda Harper, co-founder of Harper Therapy. And today, Jen and I are coming to you to have a conversation about millennialism. Yes. Uh, being a millennial, I feel like this is probably one of my favorite age groups to talk about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You have a unique understanding. I do. Of some of the superpower and the challenges of being millennial, right? Yeah, exactly. So what what would you say um, as a millennial is your definition of being a millennial and millennialism? And what sets this generation apart from other generations, right? Because honestly, you guys can get a bad rap sometimes. I, I agree. Right? I, I do. I, I do call get a bad. for, right? Because every every generation has you know, it's pros, it's cons, the thing that makes the things that make it stand out, make unique. Um, part of that has to do with some of the historical things that are happening during those period of times. But what would you say is um, unique about being a, a millennial? Um, so what I would define a millennial is, is like there's different definitions all over the internet. I know, I know. I kind I of know. like assume a millennial is someone in their mid thirties to maybe like latest being born in like 1996. So they're like, uh -huh early to mid 20s. Uh -huh. I feel like kind of the rep we get as millennials is that we're lazy, we don't want to work hard. Um, but some core characteristics that I think about millennials is that when we graduated when the economy was bad, as older mm -hmm. millennials, I'm mm -hmm. an older millennial. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think like we really like to start at the top. I think that's like unique about us. We like to start businesses. I feel like we are kind of like go-getters in some ways. Mm -hmm. I feel like we also are pretty open-minded generation. We're like mm -hmm. really into like social justice mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I would say is just like gender roles. We're mm -hmm. more accepting with like gender roles and you know transgender mm -hmm. issue related issues and I think mm -hmm. with that like we kind of get like less definitions of like dating and all that so right and those kind of, those typical gender roles and relationships and, and the way that that historically has played out is different yes exactly totally. and, and I think another big thing is like when we were kids we didn't have the internet so we're kind of like that in between of right. like not growing up with internet but then getting it and then that impacting us today and right. I think that impacts us a lot different than like generation x or generation z right who are like right. the 14 year olds right now right so that impacts you guys differently than previous generations like mine where the internet came on later in our lives or the generation after you where the internet was there the entire time you guys had this flux of there wasn't an internet then it was and then big changes very quickly in the in the coming about and the advance in technology with the internet. Yeah, I would say that. I think that's what makes a millennial really unique. It's just our yeah. in between this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of stuck in the middle of so many different things. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, there's so many different um, issues that I could talk about that relate to millennials. And we will. We're kind of have a mini series about millennialism and how uh, being a millennial. And those unique challenges um, impact relationships. But you had one. We were talking before we came on live about how you were kind of asking some of your cohort, yes. what are some of the unique challenges? And one came up above any other one. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. That would be technology. Yeah. Um, when I, like, pulled a bunch of people of different, I would say different personalities, different sure. ages of millennials from, mm -hmm. like, middle to early 20s to like middle 30s I would say technology is something that everyone mentioned right and different aspects of it mm -hmm. yeah and, um I know it impacts obviously all age groups right. technology but I kind of want to focus on like things that I noticed that millennials have mentioned or yeah. things I've even noticed in session with clients perfect awesome um, so the first thing I would notice is um, that people are really connected to their phones, yeah. their tablets, their computers. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Um, They're never that far away. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's even uh, another aspect is many people work in the field of technology now. Mm -hmm. So that even mm -hmm. adds another element. But I noticed that we are getting more disconnected because, like, even when we're sitting together, mm -hmm. people talk about, oh, my, like, partner's on their phone or playing mm -hmm. on their tablet. Yeah. And I think this is a challenge that we've been facing because I think that's leading us to not have as much meaningful connection. Face-to-face -face connection. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that we 
have taken for granted over a period of time thinking that our online connections are the same as the face-to-face connection. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a struggle to be more present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So technology and the phone can be a distraction from the face-to-face connection um, in a relationship for couples. Yes. I would, totally. I would agree with that, especially yeah. I think um, when things become more like tension in the relationship, mm-hmm. the phone can be a great distraction in a way of like just making people like less connected. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a good barrier. Yeah, it does. It does become an effective bar- barrier, but it keeps you from that connection that you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, another element I noticed of um, technology is uh, online dating. Yeah, yeah. So I would say probably us like older millennials. Um, we had it at first where you would find people in person to date. But mm-hmm. I would say just in general, it's mm-hmm. shifting more to online dating. It is. I think a lot of the couples that we're working with here, a good number of them have met through an online dating platform. Yeah. And yeah. I I think with online dating, there's like many aspects that come with it. Um, I think with online dating, there's this element that there's always another person out there. Yeah. It makes it hard to build a level of trust and commitment in a relationship if there's kind of this feeling of like, well, we're here together now until the next, until the a better option comes along. Exactly. Yeah. And when tension happens, they're mm-hmm. more likely to be like, I, this person and I don't connect. Like, mm-hmm. we don't have things in common. Clearly, mm-hmm. I should just go on to the next person. Right. We used to have things in common. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we don't because now there's friction. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, like, the fact that at your, like, fingertips, you can, I don't know which way the swiping is. but you can Left swipe. or white. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, but you can swipe left or right on someone. It is yeah. so quick. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think it's really helped probably more people connect. Like, um, mm-hmm. when I've talked to people that identify in the LGBT community, they've mm-hmm. said technology has really helped them because, mm-hmm. like, going out in general, like, you don't know who identifies as LGBT. Mm-hmm. But now, mm-hmm. like, you have a platform. Mm-hmm. But with that, mm-hmm. there's so much selection. So much, yeah. like, less likely to want to work through things. Yeah. Or even maybe just date one person at a time. Yeah, and here's the challenge is that, you know, there's a commonality, uh, there's a common thread through relationships if you just leave one and move to the next, and there's ongoing issues, that usually is you. Yes, so. that's true. <laughs> definitely, like, if you notice that you're struggling with maybe mm-hmm. communication in one relationship, mm-hmm. it definitely mm-hmm. could be something that you're contributing to the relationship, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. not going to be fixed no, by yeah. switching partners. Right, right. There's a, there is a benefit to digging deep and doing the work with your existing partner. Yeah. That's what you decide is where you want to put some work work and effort in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What else makes it challenging to be a millennial and, and have a relationship? So along with, like, online dating, social mm-hmm. media, I think that leads us to have less meaningful connections mm-hmm. because we're so used to just posting things on Facebook that mm-hmm. or Instagram that maybe you wouldn't really, like, talk about, like, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we're posting everything, everything and significant yeah. things just to mm-hmm. get likes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we also do that in terms of relationships. Mm-hmm. People have mentioned that they feel like people are posting about their relationships on social media just for that validation mm-hmm. versus actually being present mm-hmm. in the relationship. Mm-hmm. So relationships have kind of turned in a way to, like, get validation from other people. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and unfortunately, that that effort isn't towards the relationship. It's a word towards the image of the relationship, the outward social media imaging of yes. the relationship instead of actually putting effort into what's going to build a relationship. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. And um, sometimes I think that we are used to having more like superficial mm-hmm. connections through mm-hmm. Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook. Mm-hmm. I, would, I use those too because I feel like Snapchat's more of a Generation Z yeah. thing. Um, yeah. But um, we're used to that more superficial. So I think um, sometimes I think we're struggling in real life mm-hmm. to really have those deeper connections yeah. because we're so used to to just going online and just talking at a very... To even know what that looks like or feels like, the the deeper connection and relationship. Yeah, it's super vulnerable. It can be very uncomfortable. Yeah, so I think sometimes that's, like, impacting our, like, social skills of just Mm -hmm. being, like, again, going back to being really connected and present Mm -hmm. and being vulnerable, which what you said is definitely true. That is, like, probably one of the scariest things to do. Oh, totally. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um, But it's through that vulnerability that we actually get the connection that we're looking for. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. So I think like overall, social media has helped us connect in terms of meeting people, mm-hmm. in terms of like advancing our lives, mm-hmm. advancing careers. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I think it definitely causes a hindrance on our communication yeah. and ability to be present. And I think just being millennial, we have just a unique uh, connection with it since, like, we didn't always have this. Right, yeah. So if you and your partner would like some tips and tools for how to, like, use this more effectively and actually allow it to help you in your um, relationship instead of create a barrier... Jen is a great resource for that. You can give our office a call to schedule a free consultation so that she can talk with you about how she uniquely can help you with that. Yes, I'd love to help um, whoever wants to come in to feel more connected with their partner and improve communication and just knowing the uniqueness of being a millennial. Right. Superpower. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great Tuesday. Stay warm. Bye.